Oh, if I have no, recorded just, just keep trying to scrub it out, I want to get out of my pants. I, it it, it, it worries me. My jeans are I'm, I'm scared Girl, that you know, something might bullshit. bad happen. And I was all like, sure. that's my voice. Uh, if a guy just randomly uh, punches uh, me into next century. Right? This is like, the dumbest dress that? Seriously, who? <laughs> Guys, you fucking run. Ponder Sprocket's on a rampage. What? Why? I have a sneaking suspicion we are going to regret visiting today. Yes! <laughs> Another Spoxer drama! Ah! <laughs> I feel like I'm in a state of deja vu. Let's go down the checklist. Menial allegations against a person that progressively got worse until they resulted in allegations of child grooming and inappropriate sexual conversations with a minor? Check. Allegations made by a 14 year old? Check. Crop screenshots that remove the majority of the necessary context and hide important aspects of the situation that completely change how it would be viewed? Check. A 16 year old who turned 17 within the month and is now being accused of some pretty horrible things? Check. Someone blatantly lying about their age? Check. If any of what I've said sounds familiar, then you might be aware of a similar situation that happened in April of 2018 that I covered. Well, I'm sorry to say that it's happening again. Not to the same person and thankfully not to the same extent, but just because the situation isn't as widespread doesn't mean that the accusation itself isn't still ridiculously serious, or that those spreading it aren't in the wrong. Ah, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's start from the beginning. So I was sent a note on DeviantArt by a throwaway account called XXDisUserXX. In that note, he indicated to me that someone was planning on exposing him under his original account name, the Finny Fin Fin, in a DeviantArt journal. Unfortunately, I was swamped with other things and didn't make it to look into that situation fully until after the journal was posted. And I am absolutely furious about that. Finn, I am legitimately so sorry. He directed me to this user, Frick the Pirate. Great name there. Can't imagine how it might be misconstrued as something inappropriate. You know, considering I found out from an earlier journal of yours that you're 14. What's your friend's name? Boink the Dragon? Frick did indeed post a journal exposing Finn, and that's what we're gonna be looking into. Brace yourselves for this is gonna be a long one, because wow, there's so much in here that's either being pointed out with hypocritical double standards in play, lacking context, or is blatantly a lie. The journal started out innocuous enough, but the allegations have progressively gotten worse over time as other people have seen the journal and chimed in with their own experiences. I'm gonna work my way through the journal starting from the original allegations and working up to the very worst of them. What was the very worst allegation, you may be asking? That he was being sexually inappropriate with an 11 year old. On the side of the accused, we have Finn and his girlfriend, Melody Sweetheart. On the side of the accusers, we have, and this is a bit of a list, so bear with me, Frick the Pirate, listed in the screenshots at one point as Foxy, another as Sunshine, and again, as Acid Rain. They have a few other names, but I'm not gonna list them here. We'll go over them later. Minty Monty, otherwise known as Mintoria on DeviantArt. Sunny, also known as Depresso Espresso, and known on DeviantArt as Autumnox. Homo Month, known on DeviantArt as Goat Pills, and Cole, also known online as Ceramic Coyote. Also, also known as the 11 year old in this scenario. I've got a lineup of friends to torture by having them read out each of these users' chats and the journal. We've got Cosmo Stardust voicing Frick. Hey, how's it going guys? I'm Cosmo Stardust. Um, I am going to be voicing Frick. I am an artist and a variety channel and I hope you enjoy my garbage voice acting. Caden Marks voicing Finn. Hello, I'm Caden Marks and I'm sad on the inside. Master TP10 voicing Autumn Knox. <laughs> Ponder, you gotta help me out here. I am really nervous to say hi to everyone right now, and I am not clever enough to think of a unique way to say hello to everybody, so can you throw me a bone here, please? Chaos55T, five five voicing goat pills. Oh, hello, it is I, Chaos. <laughs> Vadzaken, voicing Mentoria. Hi, I'm Jaylu, and you don't need to know anything about me. Ghost EXE, voicing Cole. Hello, I'm a spooky ghost. Doodle Tones, voicing Plush Wendigo. Yeah, I suppose I'm here too. Icy Hazard, voicing Finn's girlfriend, Melody Sweetheart. That'll actually be in part two. Hey, everybody. Well, let's get this shit on the road. V Omega, voicing a comment left by the user Deer Tales. Hello there. I'm not being held against my will. And if my death happens within the next couple of months, it's just a coincidence. Don't contact the police! And finally, I'll have a few of my own friends filling in for some of the smaller line reads. Y'all already know STEM. Hello! But here's Mecca. Hmm. And B, because I needed at least one more person without a life. Gee, thanks. Strap in, my cuties, because you're in for a hell of a ride.
a note before you read. So, I wasn't actually going to post this journal. I'm not here to put anybody down, start any drama, or to upset anybody. But there comes a point where SOMEBODY has to step in. This is why I censored all the users' names of everybody here. Yeah, that didn't stay the case for very long. And if you do figure out who they are, please, PLEASE do not attack them. Yes, it's annoying what they're doing, and yes, it's scaring people, but they don't deserve to be attacked. Thank you. I will take no responsibility for anything anybody does here. I take no responsibility for people seeing my overblown accusations and acting against the guy after hearing them. Not how that works there, honey. To start, the main message behind this journal. This is not to call people out. Again, this is to make people think before they post. There is a difference, a big, big difference between venting and guilting people. Now, it's difficult to actually spot this difference if you haven't been yourself a manipulator. If you yourself haven't been a manipulator, are you therein admitting to being a manipulator yourself? Yeah, funny thing about that. We'll get to it later. Please understand that whilst this does not apply to everybody, most people who are suicidal don't speak up about it and don't constantly parade about it like it's some badge of honor. You being suicidal isn't funny. It's not an excuse for you to behave badly, and it's certainly not something you should pretend to be. If you're seriously considering killing or harming yourself, please seek serious help. There is nothing healthy about doing it, and you're not only hurting yourself, but the people around you. Please remember that people do care about you, and there'll always be somebody to talk to. So this stems from conversations that Finn has had with others where he's either alluded to or flat out stated that he's suicidal. We'll see a little more context behind that later, but remember this journal is about Finn, and it does state him by name in the later edits, so at this point we know it's about him. Plus, when someone asked who Frick was talking about in the comments section and asked for his username, Frick responded with his Twitter name. It's pretty safe to say at this point, Frick is openly spreading Finn's name around in tandem with these accusations. For one thing, no, you're actually completely wrong on that claim. The notion that people experiencing suicidal thoughts don't talk about it is a misconception. People who experience suicidal thoughts and plan on going through with it do not make their thoughts known because they don't want to be talked out of it. However, people who experience suicidal thoughts in general can still express those feelings. And in particular, it's important that those feelings be addressed because if someone is making their feelings known, it's because they want to be talked out of it. This is a common misunderstanding about who expresses their suicidal feelings or who chooses not to and why. How do I know this? experience, unfortunately. Not only that, Finn has harmed himself in the past, and this is something in particular I'll bring up again in a moment to a different degree, but just know that when I do bring it up again, it won't be Finn using self-harm as a means of guilting someone. Additionally, Finn has been seeking help. I have screenshots of conversations where he's made note that he's been going to a professional. Half of what you're saying here is flat out wrong, and the other half is advice being imposed on someone who is already taking the steps you're demanding they take. How exactly is this supposed to be helpful? But, if you're one of those people who use it as a shield and aren't really considering it, please, please stop. You make the people who are considering it look like jokes, attention seekers, even liars. You are ruining the potential help these people could get. You are harming them. Whether you meant to do this or not, you are. You have no way of determining that Finn is lying. You're exclusively basing this off of your own speculation, and considering you either didn't know or didn't consider that Finn was already seeing a specialist, it's a claim based on inaccuracies from the get-go. I understand how stressful it can be when you've said something nasty and regretted it later, especially when there's backlash, but understand that you can't use being suicidal or depressed as a shield for this. You can't suddenly decide you're really sad to guilt the people who are teaching you a lesson to not be angry at you. Being depressed or suicidal will never, ever make you a bad person. Except you literally using him talking about his depression and suicidal expressions against him here as a means of saying he's faking it for attention. How did you not catch that? Just do not pretend to be suicidal or depressed. For the pure sake of being protected from people being mean to you. Ooh, yeah, we got to this point a lot faster than I thought we would. Ladies and gentlemen and everyone in between and all around, cuties of all shapes, I present to you a journal that Frick posted on April 30th, 2019. This is a journal where Frick takes private Discord beef with some other user named Oixie Powders 116 What? 
kind of name is that? And not only makes it public, they say this. So she posts a rant on the server we share, pretty much indirectly quoted me using almost the exact words I used. Basically saying, don't be a prick to people cause you're in a bad mood. At first she tried to argue that it wasn't aimed at me. I say at first, she never ever said it wasn't to my face, but she did reveal herself in another server, Keck, Key, -E -K I don't, I don't know, and tried to make me sound self absorbed <laughs> by saying shit like, not everything is about you. See, I'd believe her if it wasn't for the almost direct quote and the fact that I'm not a complete and utter fucking idiot. Long story short, she ended up really, really badly upsetting me. I did end up harming myself, and that didn't exactly stop her. By your own logic, isn't this you using threats of harm to get someone else to act a certain way or stop a certain behavior? You even specify that it didn't exactly stop her, which would only be a possibility if she was aware of you self-harming as a result of her actions, so somebody must have told her that was the case, and why are you then expecting it to be or implying that it should be an incentive for her to stop? Why is it okay for you to directly self-harm in reaction to someone being mean to you, but you'll publicly blast Finn for purportedly doing the same thing? Another note about this is that Finn actually spoke to Frick about this in Discord DMs. Sunshine is Frick. You doing okay? I'm a shit human being who's petty at everything. It's alright to be petty. Ooh, don't say that, we haven't even gotten to that part. Everybody's upset by different things. Yeah, I'm jealous because I'm jotting someone's close friends list even though I talk to them a lot. I'm jealous because I feel like they resent me. And they do, I think. Because I messed them up so badly. Maybe you should talk to them about it? I am. I did. I don't have enough courage because I'm a fucking pussy. Well, hey, you're in a lot of other people's close friend lists. I'm sorry. It's my fault. I'm too petty. It's not your fault. I'd be upset as well. <sighs> I'm a selfish person, so I'd probably just be salty and take them out of my list quietly. That's what I did to my old friends. Hell, you unwatched me. I saw that. Oh, that was ages ago. I'm not asking you to. I never remembered to watch you back because we don't talk much and I wasn't very active on Mint server. No, I wanna. I know I saw it and more of a friend, TARDIS. Probably because of that journal a lot of people know I'm a piece of shit. The point of the journal wasn't to call you a piece of shit or make people think you were because you're not. Uh-huh. He's back, RIP. I kinda predicted this. Yup. Mm-hmm, nothing about you being shit. I never really considered him a friend, but certainly considered him an ally. He's driven me up the wall so many times, I'm so sick of having people coming to me crying their eyes out over him, only for him to be fine time and time again. Just saying, I predicted you coming back. Mm-hmm. Ally. We never spoke much, Finn. I never got to know you. Mm-hmm. What's wrong? Sure, let's answer that question, shall we? I'm mentally fucking troubled. People think I lie about everything. People avoid me for that specific reason. They think I leech on people. I'm a douchebag for trying to help my friend and end up worsening her condition. People think I'm a liar. People think I guilt trip. People think what I'm saying is not true. That I don't starve myself. I don't cut myself. I'm not suicidal. I wonder what this is. For all the people I hurt, please just yell at me. Tell me I'm horrible. All I'm is hurt for all of that. Sorries won't help. All I wanted was to make friends. That didn't work. If you hate me, cut me out. Even if you don't know me. Avoid me at all costs. For I am a horrible person who've unloyal, untrustworthy, and shouldn't be forgiven. I deserve nothing. I've lost my friends. Not that. A family. I'm sorry. I am right. I can't let go of things. I am petty. I get treated like shit because I'm a fucking attention whore who causes trouble. People do avoid me because I'm too fucking sick. And just tell everything about me is just one but elaborate story. Jesus Christ. Even my fucking best friends are tired of my bullshit. Is this my fault? Because I feel some of this stems from me. <laughs> Yes, Finn, spot on. All I ever want is for you to suffer. That's why I hyperventilated for an hour. That's why I have a pounding headache. That's why I vomited. That's why it's all I can do to keep myself from going into the kitchen and getting a knife. Good job, you figured me out. Who's that from? It's from my best friend. At least she understands that I need to suffer even more. No, you don't. <laughs> oh wow, I considered him a friend and I've believed him. I'm so fucking dumb. <laughs> I do love it when people say they hate me. I love it when people say I fucking lie for attention. 
I don't hate you. Isn't life funny when no one believes you when you're on the verge of killing yourself? Isn't it funny when people say I'm too much of a fucking coward? I'm not anorexic. I'm not suicidal. I was in therapy for a year and that shit didn't help. I tried to overdose myself because no one listened to me. Even my fucking parents, my friends, all they kept saying was, you're overreacting. Jesus Christ, you have a mental disorder? Welp, stop it. <laughs> I really fucking love it. Love it. Let it all out. So not only did Finn fully express to Frick that he had gone to therapy, he even showed them a screenshot of his cut marks to indicate that he hadn't been lying about that. Yet here Frick is making a journal claiming that he's lying about all of this for attention, blatantly ignoring him telling them these things in the past. At this point, Finn's made note of his mental health issues, his attempts to overcome it, and his pattern of self-harm. Frick has literally nothing to substantiate the claims that these are lies outside of, oh, but it's totally untrue, you guys. Do you not believe that he cuts himself even with the image sent to you? Do you know what self-harm scars look like and therein you're skeptical of the validity of these ones? If so, then why hide the fact that he's shown them to you in the first place? If you honestly believe that he was lying about harming himself, then why would you not use Finn's self-harm scars as a piece of your evidence and then compare it to how other scars tend to look? If you actually believe that he was lying about this, hiding the images that he provided to you only serves to harm your argument. This is why it kind of seems like you're just saying this out of spite. Is this an example of him using instances of self-harm for pity points by pointing out that he's done it and is hurt when people claim he's lying about it? Why is it okay for you to ignore this but then also use your instances of self-harm in a public journal to exemplify, yo, this person was being super mean to me, guys? Who pushed me to make this journal? Well, if you know me personally, you know I'm not somebody to just go off on a tangent about something for no apparent reason. Something has to annoy me to the point where I feel I have to do this. I read that Oixie journal. That's debatable. Basically, there is a user, whether suicidal or upset or not, who is having a hard time controlling his emotions. He is constantly, constantly posting statuses about how hard his life is or how he wants to kill himself, and it's getting to the point where it's scaring people, upsetting people, and worrying people. The worst part? He's never taken any action towards actually doing any of this. Neither has he shown any signs of being actually suicidal. <coughs> I'm sorry, but uh, bullshit. And again, this. Never shown any signs of actually being suicidal, my ass. You're 14. If someone cutting themselves isn't indicative of suicidal or depressive thought patterns, what is? And what exactly makes you qualified to point these out? You're 14! And before you say, well, maybe he did it for attention, then you'd have to look at Frick admitting to harming themselves in the Oitsi journal with the same levels of scrutiny. Gee, Frick, are you harming yourself for attention? I'm sure an accusation like that probably hurts. And the fuck do you mean, whether suicidal or not? Nah, fuck off with that. Not only did you expressly say that he was not suicidal and was faking it, if he is suicidal, suffering from depression or anxiety, of course he's not going to be able to control his emotions. Do you think suicidal thoughts are a controlled and normal emotional response? Uh, excuse me, your suicidal thoughts are making me worry. Could you just not? In specifying that whether suicidal or not, you're basically saying that even if he is suicidal, he should just shut up about it. Whatever happened to this line? Please remember that people do care about you and there will always be somebody to talk to. You just forget you typed that? There's always someone to talk to, unless you get annoying, at which point just stop talking about it because you're getting annoying. Yeah, can't imagine that causing problems at all. I am most certainly not here to say that he isn't depressed or suicidal. This entire journal has been you implying that he is, by your own words, and I hecking quote. If you're one of those people who use it as a shield and aren't really considering it, please, please stop. You make the people who are considering it look like jokes, attention seekers, even liars. You are ruining the potential help these people could get. You are harming them. Whether you meant to do this or not, you are. This journal is directed at Finn. You are outright stating to him that he is one of these people. Additionally, something I just noticed, you state you make the people who are considering it look like jokes, attention seekers, even liars. How do you know they're considering it unless they expressly say they're considering it? Oh, but they can't expressly say that they're considering it because that means they're not considering it. Whoops, it's almost like that's a huge ass fucking contradiction. But the way he's acting is inexcusable regardless. Whether he is having a hard time or not, Threatening people who care about you and look up to you with your own death will never be a good nor honorable thing to do. The fact that you hid my first comment telling you it was irritating people was bad enough. 
but then to go on and try and act sly and clever by posting a new status, making a sly, uninformed comment about me, but without using your guts to actually tag me or tell people what happened, was disgusting. Hey Frick, how come you didn't tag Oixie? How come when this journal first came out, you didn't tag Finn? It's weird, it's almost like you're doing the very thing you're saying is disgusting here. I'm going to assume that this has to do with the screenshots that will get brought up later in this journal, but basically they posted a comment on a status post of Finn's on DeviantArt, and he removed it. Also, that contradiction. Mm. There will always be people to talk to you if you're feeling suicidal. Threatening people with your death is a shitty thing to do. Yeah, it is a shitty thing to do, but you haven't proven that it's something that Finn does. And if he's not doing that and you're out here telling him that his expressions of feelings that are probably terrifying him is dishonorable and it's irritating people, you come out looking like the shitty person for being an asshat to someone who's probably scared and in need of help. Now yes, since you're a young teen, Finn probably shouldn't be asking for help from you because as evidenced by this fucking journal, clearly you don't know how to effectively deliver that help. You could say, hey Finn, I'm not qualified to help you out in this. I'm a stupid fucking teenager who clearly doesn't know enough about mental health issues to be of help. So while I'll try to support you as best I can, I think you need to direct your feelings towards someone who knows more about how they might actually be able to help you. You know what would actually be helpful? Directing him to people who can help, not demanding that he bottle it up because it's irritating. What a horrible thing to say to someone who's potentially suicidal, whom you are acknowledging might be suicidal. Pro tip to anyone, if someone is expressing suicidal thoughts to you and you're unqualified to help them, please make a note of that to them. If they are actively looking for help with their situation and you make a note that you are not experienced enough to deliver that help, that in and of itself is helping because you're guiding them in where to best share those feelings and get the aid that they so clearly crave. Shock of all shocks, people with suicidal thoughts fall back on people they think might be able to support them through those terrifying feelings. Yes, they might seek to not do this for fear of being a burden, but they also might not. It entirely depends on the person. Even if friends say, I'll always be here for you, teenage friends and hell, even adult friends can't always actually help you in situations like this. If you can't help them, say that you can't help them. And if you're actually concerned with their well-being, you will guide them towards that help and away from you, the person who clearly can't help. It's important that people experiencing suicidal thoughts know that they're not a burden to their loved ones and that they will be missed because they have effectively convinced themselves that they're horrible and people will be better off without them. Good God! The fact that I used to think you were pretty okay and chill guy who I wouldn't have any problems with pushes this issue. You used to be cool until I found out you were suicidal. That is literally all I hear. The status he hid my comment on was one about something removing him from his friend list and another one unwatching him without saying anything. I simply commented that it was likely due to his constant negativity and bringing other people's moods down. Not an ounce of aggression in the comment. This isn't just me making it up. One of his ex-friends actually told me about this. Just because the comment wasn't aggressive doesn't mean it wouldn't hurt. If Finn is experiencing these thoughts and he's depressed and, as you yourself have stated, has trouble controlling his emotions, your comment basically indicates that he's being left in the dust by people he considers friends because of things he can't control. Based on your claim about what the comment said, it would have been indicating exactly what he already thinks about himself. You know, those scary feelings where he feels like a burden to everyone? Can't imagine him not wanting those worries confirmed to him, especially by by someone to whom he had already expressed how he was depressed and suicidal. And how does he react? He hides my comment. Not to mention the fact that he often talks shit about his quote unquote friends behind their backs, yet jumps to defend them when someone somebody else says something. Winky face. I won't tell you who told me that, but it's certainly juicy coming from somebody who whines and whacks his arms about when somebody so much as calls him ugly over the internet. Ah, somebody who told you that. I love hearsay rumors used to expose someone without any evidence given. It's my favorite! Oh wow, look at that. My friends actually removed me from their friends list. One actually unwatched me. Life's going great for me. He didn't even have the good grace to reply to me before doing so. Note me, or anything of the sorts. He'd simply hit it. Put his fingers in his ears, singing la la la, as I'm sure you'll soon pick up many people like this do tend to do. 
People like this. You mean suicidal people who consider their very existence to be a drain on others, the fear of which is what compels them to take their own life? Yeah, can't imagine why he wouldn't want to hear confirmation of that fear. Also, side note that I just thought of. He didn't have the good grace to note me first. You didn't have the good grace to note him before posting a public comment. Are you this dense? In fact, he still does it. He doesn't hide all the comments, but he won't reply to any or very little of the comments that don't pander to him and make him feel like a king on a throne. It's funny when you're on the verge of killing yourself again. <laughs> Everyone laugh with me. My man, nobody who's truly considering talks like this. In fact, most people struggling with suicidal thoughts hardly talk about it at all. I fail to believe that you're doing anything but trying to manipulate people at the moment. I'm not against you, but you need to either apologize for scaring people, or to be honest, I'm going to start taking screenshots of every negative status you make and expose you for the daily manipulation of everybody who watches you. You're scaring. I'm not against you, but I totally think that you're not actually struggling with suicidal thoughts because you talk about it. Not to mention the active threat that if he doesn't shut up about his feelings, you're going to expose him, which you did end up doing. Are you kidding me with this? So here we have someone who's allegedly suicidal, voicing their concerns because they're not feeling great, and this brilliant kid decides that the best course of action is to publicly make note that they're faking their suicidal thoughts, provided they don't shut up about it. You're... I don't want to say you're horrible, but you're kind of horrible. Here is an example of one of his suicide threats. This one was actually posted today. So it's not as if this is something he used to do that I'm pulling up now. He still does it to this day. He hasn't learned his lesson at all. Um, I threatened to expose you and you're still suicidal? What the fuck, man? Haven't you learned your lesson? Now, of course, as I said at the beginning, whilst not sounding true to everybody with suicidal thoughts, it is very, very rare that somebody truly suffering with it will really post status after status after status after status after status after status, status etc. about it. It's not a fucking parade, man. Most people who think like this feel like they'll only bother people if they told them. And after most cases of suicide, the people closest often say that they didn't have a single clue the person felt like this. Now, explain to me why the fuck you're parading about it again. Because he doesn't want to kill himself. People who hide feelings of suicidal depression do so not only because they feel like a burden, but also because, especially in cases of people who go through with it, they don't want to be talked out of it. In fact, more often than not, if someone was demonstrating outward signs of depression, a lot of the time they will all of a sudden become really happy and then go through with the act. Wanna know why? They get happy right towards the end because they have it confirmed to themselves that they're going through with it. The stress is lifted and they feel better because they know it's coming. Cut. I apologize if this is a bit of a heavy subject for you all. I'm not exactly happy having to talk about it, but I think that understanding the way people react to suicidal thoughts is important here. You know what people also don't tend to talk about openly if they have it? Multiple personality disorder, which if a person were to be formally diagnosed with it by a psychiatrist or medical professional, Professional, it would not be explained to them as multiple personality disorder because the currently accepted proper medical term for it is dissociative identity disorder. If someone had been diagnosed with it in, oh, say, the last 14 years, it would have been diagnosed as DID, not MPD, because the medical diagnosis was changed to reflect a better understanding of the condition in 1994. Good thing I'm not accusing anyone of potentially lying about a serious medical condition. As I stated before, those who openly talk about their depression and their suicidal thoughts do so because they don't want to hurt themselves and are actively looking for the support that will encourage them not to do so. He's parading it around, in your words, because he likely wants comfort that he's not a burden to people and that the horrible thoughts in his head are wrong. You know, those thoughts that you are actively confirming to him. If he's really suicidal, why hasn't he seeked help? I'm confused as to whether or not you're simply not aware that he does seek help and are there and just guessing that he doesn't without bothering to ask or you're just ignoring instances where he's mentioned it. Why does he keep to scaring his mostly younger watchers? Oh, oh! That's right, they're easily manipulated and don't want him to die. Great move. General guilt tripping. As if the false suicide threats weren't enough, our dude also just generally guilt trip people into feeling bad for him. This could also be considering compliment fishing, to be honest. 
On its own, nothing wrong with compliment fishing, but paired with all the other shit he's been doing, it becomes a massive web of shitty things to do. I'm beginning to question if my art is horrible again. All art I seem to do of ponies are always in the same pose. I can't do any other poses. Practice with other poses. Find references for other poses for ponies. The more you practice, the easier it will be. OMF dude, not this again, XD. Do you know how many times it took Blank and me to tell you your art was amazing? Notice now here, instead of saying something calm like, could somebody help me improve my art? He instead chooses to insult his own art and say things he is incapable of doing, rather than things he would like to improve. Who fucking doesn't insult their own art? I feel like almost every artist does this. I did this on a podcast not two weeks ago. How is this even a point? I mean, fuck, you use bases. I can only imagine it's because you think your art is not up to standards. Hell, let's go through your gallery. Sorry if the main looked a bit weird. I struggled with it. Notice here how instead of saying something like, could someone help me improve with this mane? They instead just say that the mane looks weird. I'm never fucking drawing her mane right ever again. Well gee, that sounds like self-criticism of your ability to replicate a design. He's normally just a normal vampire in my own universe, but I can't draw the human so there. Admitting to not being able to draw a thing, likely because it looks horrible, somehow different to admitting to not being able to draw a thing because it looks horrible. Makes sense? This took three fucking days. Sounds like criticism of your artistic speed. Something's off about this to me. If I can't figure it out, I'll try to fix it. It's not the eye. I did that on purpose. Admitting that something looks wrong in the piece. I'm sure you guys get the gist by this point. The point is that it's fucking stupid. Also, I feel the need to make a note of this now. This is going to come up again later. Let's just say that I managed to get access to a couple of particular Discord servers. The comments are also something interesting to pay attention to. Notice how he replies to the comments, pandering to him, saying, Aw, oh, poor baby. No, your art is so good. X, 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 poor thing. Yet he fails to reply to the comment giving him genuine advice on how he could help himself improve. Hmm. Unfortunately, we can't see what was actually said in that comment, though we can determine based on the second comment that whoever left that one was an acquaintance of Finn's and the two clearly have a rapport. It kind of makes sense for Finn to respond to someone he's friends with. Also, why bother responding to the top comment? I don't know about you, but that's kind of a no-duh statement. Practice at this thing you never draw and you'll get better at drawing it. Thanks, Einstein. I'm sure that was a groundbreaking revelation. If anything else becomes apparent to me, I'll update this. Yeah, unfortunately for everyone, including my health, they did just that. That's also part of the reason I'm covering this whole journal, because as far as I've been able to gather, the first part of this journal was uploaded potentially months ago, and it's only been re-uploaded recently. Which means that despite the potentially more recent interactions where Finn directly makes note that the things said in Frick's journal were wrong, Frick still stands by it and is ignoring his testimony and continuing to push this narrative with just as little evidence. Please share this journal, not to upset or expose the person, evident by the fact that I blurred his username and anybody he associates with out throughout the duration of this journal, but because the actual message is important. Do not fake suicidal thoughts to get what you want. Beginning of the journal. Hey dude, this is a call out. Don't be a person who fakes suicidal thoughts. Middle of the journal. Now, I'm not saying he's faking being suicidal. End of the journal. Don't fucking fake suicidal thoughts to get what you want. Something I've been expressing this guy has been doing. Uh-huh. Ho-ho! And if you thought we were done here, well, actually, I think I've been done since I started this video, but that's neither here nor there. So after Frick originally posted the journal, they went back in a few times and added in some edits. Unfortunately, these edits are not dated, so I can't be entirely sure what days or times they were put in, but know that each consecutive edit obviously happens after one another, and the last one was somewhere around June 9th. So we're slowly going to work towards the most recent one. Edit number one reads, Edit one. Well, something absolutely vile just came to me. One of my sources has told me that he sent a screenshot of a note to people and stopped replying to them for ages, even deactivating his DA. If you're not catching on, he pretended to be dead to scare people. This is disgusting. There's absolutely no screenshots of this provided, so I turned to the accused in the situation and asked him about it. Wazoo Ninja Skills is Frick. 
Also, I never pretended to be dead. Well, that's how it seemed. You scared a lot of people. I never do that. I only deactivated because I needed a break from everything. Understandable, but you should have at least told your friends right away that's what happened. I know, but I don't process like a normal human being. I shut everyone out. I know, but that doesn't mean it was good. I removed the parts where I called you an asshole directly. Okay, thanks. Anyways, I just need some time off DA, I guess, and talk to my psychologist again. I think that would be best. I actually am diagnosed with depression and anxieties. I think that's pretty obvious, though. I'll make a status. I'll apologize to the folks. Notice the dates here. That's May 14th, 2018, long before this journal's updates. So not only do we have yet another instance where Finn has outright made note to you that he does see a psychologist, Pretty sure the term you're looking for is actually psychiatrist or psychotherapist, Finn, but most people don't understand the difference, so I won't hold that against you. We also have an instance of you being outright told that you and others' assumptions about this was completely wrong. Despite that, however, you ignore this past interaction and his denial directly to you just so you can continue to push the claim with no evidence because it's what you personally think. No, that's not how that works. You stated a claim and Finn emphatically denied it as being true. The next step after that is to provide evidence of your claim to showcase that Finn's denial is untrue. If two sides cannot come to an agreement regarding a series of events, that's when you bring in evidence to prove one of the sides wrong. Do you have evidence of him writing a suicide note and then deactivating? Do you have evidence of him telling someone that he was going to commit death and then deactivating? Do you have a screenshot of a Discord name change where he indicated this before disappearing, literally any single one of these could be presented to contest Finn's denial, but nothing is provided here minus your own personal testimony, which as we've seen is lacking in experience as you are overall unqualified to gauge this situation. You don't just get to ignore the denial and continue to throw out the claim just because you personally think that. How are you supposed to convince other people? Oh, that's right, you just make a ranty deviant art journal with some corrupt screenshots and virtue signaling about depression and suicide, and then all the other 14 year olds believe you at face value. I forgot how the internet works. Edit 2. Our man blocked me. XD. In the status he posted, he did not explain what he did and why. He did not apologize for anything he did, and he didn't even begin to feel sympathy for the people he hurt. He simply started crying because I called him an asshole once for manipulating children. Our man blocked me, XD. Yeah, the guy, according to his own testimony, experiencing depression and suicidal thoughts, blocked the person who was calling him out publicly to their watchers who are going to be biased into believing you from the get-go, telling him he's faking his depression and suicidal thoughts for attention. Can't imagine why. Additionally, from the journal on Oaksy that Frick wrote, To give context to the last message, I had said something like, FFS, Discord keeps giving me notice when people I've blocked have said something in a server Discord. I do not give a shit what they're saying. And apparently that's shit talking, but okay. So it's perfectly fine for you to block people for reasons we aren't privy to, but it's not okay for Finn to block you, potentially for a journal calling him a manipulator of children. Mind you, the children in this scenario are around the same age as him. The screenshots from May 14th, 2018, Finn was 15 in those screenshots. Everyone involved seems to be within one to three years of his age. Frick is 14, birthday September 2nd. Mentoria is 15, birthday September 26th. Goat Pills is 15, birthday May 5th. Autumn Knox is literally four months younger than Finn. Edit 3. He has taken my critiques beautifully and even maturely. We sorted it out in DMs. If you're one of his white knight friends or fans who can't see any wrongdoings, please fuck off. Lol, never mind. I was just kidding. If he does something else, I shall edit this again. Please still share this journal. This is not just about this drama. This carries a very important message about faking suicidal thoughts and depression to avoid your own misdoings. I am most certainly not here to say that he isn't depressed or suicidal. Literally fucking how. That is exactly what you're saying right here. The message in this journal is don't fake suicidal thoughts and depression to get what you want. You use Finn as an example of someone faking suicidal thoughts and depression to get what he wants. Yet you still try to claim that you're not saying he's faking it. Does nobody see the glaring issue here? Edit 4. So he actually lied. On the last turn, he had promised to stop manipulating, lying, and trying to scare people. What has he been doing the past couple of months? Exactly that. 
He claims to be starving himself for some bullshit, and I know it's bullshit because he's all drama, hand to head one second and perfectly fine the next. You haven't showcased that. In fact, being overly dramatic one minute and then calm and collected the next is not only something that can happen to someone with emotionally driven problems such as depression or anxiety, which Finn has stated he has, it's also something common of teenagers in general. If he had kept doing it, then you should not only have old screenshots, you should have screenshots with timestamps from after your original journal was posted, but you don't have anything to show in this section. Additionally, from what I've been able to gather, you seem to have now come to this conclusion that he lied because of a journal that Oixi made claiming as much. You implied in your journal on Oixi that they blow things out of proportion, lie, bully, and rant about interactions between the two of you that didn't happen how she's describing. You have directly implied that she can't be trusted, so what has changed between then and now? Why is Oixi suddenly a trustworthy source? Because she's condemning Finn instead of you? If you already have confirmation based on past experiences that Oixi lies or manipulates situations, why are you suddenly trusting her word and using it to vilify someone now? He's changed his Discord tags about 10 times in a month to something along the lines of, I need a break, or I'm fucking done. He deactivated his DVR more times than I've breathed. It's honestly sickening. About as sickening as the mentality in this journal and on the Discord servers. Oh yeah, that's another similarity between this and the last situation of this silk I covered. Don't worry, we'll get there. I'll try to dig up screenshots of people who are growing genuine concern and worry for him dying. Those screenshots have not been dug up nor presented. Because yes, he is getting to people like that. These are people he's supposed to love and support and care about. His friends. But instead of that, he just scares them into thinking he's either dead or hurt. It's sickening. Fucking stop it. If you're one of his friends, please stop feeding into his constant pity fishing. I suggest supporting him. But if he starts pulling the bullshit again, it's time to just ignore him for an hour or so and let him sit. We'll go over how his friends act in a little bit. Trust me. It's not what Frick is claiming it is. He is a manipulator. Whether people like to face it or not, he is. On one of the servers I'm in, he really upset the owner by making her think it was her fault he had left simply because he couldn't handle that people were telling him that guilting teenagers on the internet wouldn't be as effective as getting serious help. See, now if it's a server that you're in, you have no reason to not have the screenshots available as evidence. And with that, unfortunately, we move into the claims that actually have screenshots provided with them. This is also inching into the far more serious claims. Little disclaimer here, as we progress further into this, the screenshots are going to be very uncomfortable for people to listen to. I'm warning you now because they will be read out for the sake of transparency. Major edit, please read. As it would turn out, Finn also supports pedophilia, and there is evidence supporting this. He is also way more abusive towards his friends than I initially thought. I'll find the evidence over time. It has been buried since, but once I get it, it will be 100% uploaded. Here we go. Click on these if you need a description of what exactly is happening. All right. We're gonna go through these screenshots for provided one at a time. Prep yourselves, we have a lot to go through and the Octomama is going to guide you. Oh wait, I saw a conversation that kind of implied this kid's in the tentacles. No, 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 wait a minute! But you said you wouldn't break up with her because of me. Well, I couldn't control myself. I broke up with her for multiple reasons. I tried going back to a relationship that was already broken. She didn't trust anyone enough to open up about her problems. We fought a lot. I remember that huge argument we had. She was always thinking, she will never be as good of a girlfriend as you were to me. She knows that you two are different, but I was fucking stupid. I kept telling myself I still love you. Ah, oh, Finn. I just, I want to ask you out. Just this once, but it can never happen. Basically, he was trying to make Minty feel bad that they weren't dating so that she would date him to please himself. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes, I see. Now, why don't we look at the rest of that conversation? Okay. What if I told you about how I feel about you? Would it hurt you? If I was being honest. No, it wouldn't hurt me. Go ahead. I still love you, but I still stand by what I wasn't cheating. I wasn't hurting anyone. It was just a role play. I don't know if I can ever let go of loving you because it's like a fucking plague in my mind. You thought that would hurt me? I appreciate you being honest with me, Finn. You seem pretty hurt after outbreak up. I was. Aren't you still now? Every day I ask we would ever be together again. 
cold reality answers back. Well, I'm not as hurt as I was before. It's been almost a year anyways. When was it? July 15th? I'm honestly not sure. I'm surprised it's almost been a year. Yeah, I still remember. This was pretty stupid. By the way, that is some diary entry about how he and Minty got into a relationship. I lied to myself. This is fucking stupid. <laughs> I wrote about you like three times, I think. I don't know. I'm so sorry. It's my fault. I'm sorry. And when was everything your fault? If anything, I was the one who initiated that roleplay. I know, but if I let you roleplay the way you wanted, none of this would have happened. Minty, it was wrong for me. I knew it didn't make you happy. I'm just sad that it hurt you so much that you had to date other people to forget about me. I still haven't forgotten. I thought several times of asking you out again, but knowing your situation... It's not that I don't want to, Finn. I promised myself I'd never date online again, and I need to keep it. I'm sorry. I know you will. Just please don't be upset because of that. Minty, I'm not surprised. I'm just disappointed. I don't want to force you into dating me. I know you won't be happy. I just wanted to say I still love you. You post those vents when Yan and I were dating, and I don't know why you did. Play with my emotions for a while. I just had some sad moments and thought it was because of that, but it never got better. Until now at least. I'm actually happy. I'm not. I know. And I also know that I can't do anything to help you. Minty, those vents? Like about me sometimes? It made me think about who I loved even more. I'm not even saying it's your fault. I'm just saying that it made me break up with Yan because I thought I was stupid enough to be back with you. Well now, isn't that interesting? Finn mentions vents made by Mentoria. I wonder what those could be. I guess we'll never know since Frick didn't post anything about jokes on you, I have them. Well now, isn't that just disgustingly telling? Gee, Frick, pretty fucking weird that you don't include this in the context of your accusations. Finn was guilt-tripping Minty into dating him? Then what is this supposed to be? Cause this certainly seems like guilt-tripping on Minty's part. I've been questioning why I've been on and off with my happiness. Then I realized that I was broken. Not like shattered glass or anything like that. Broken like my heart. I may never be happy again. But that's fine if everyone else around me is. I care more about your happiness than my life. And I'm starting to catch feelings for someone that I shouldn't. I've been letting my anger and sadness out on myself, which I believe is the right thing for me to do so I don't hurt anyone else. Please, be happy. You guys know how I've talked in the past about how every little emotion for a teenager is blown way out of proportion because they literally can't control their emotional output? They don't think so much as they feel their way through life? Yeah. This is a pretty good example of that. Don't you just like hate it when you start to catch feelings for someone that ruined your life and made you broken in the first place? But like, they've already moved on, but you'll never move on. They don't care. Like LMAO, who cares? Shocking how much of a situation can change when you only show part of a conversation. Here she's broken up with Finn, but they're still friends, and of course Finn is going to see her DeviantArt posts, so obviously he's going to see her vents. So Finn sees these posts made by his friend, which are so clearly about how she still has feelings for him, and it hurts her to see him dating someone else, and yet you vilify Finn for thinking that means she wants to get back together with him? Why is Finn suddenly the bad guy for taking a chance and asking if this is the case? Especially when Minty has been throwing hints about this in her artwork. She's basically screaming, I'm so sad because this guy is dating her and not me. Finn asks her, hey, do you want me to date you? She says, no. And then the two of you dumbasses try to make him out to be the asshole in this situation. No, you little weirdos. That's not how that works. There are a few more screenshots I have, but it basically just extends the conversation. I'll throw them up here real quick. And then it ends off with Finn asking if there's anything new happening or if Minty's crushing on anyone. So we'll move on to the next screenshot of Frick's journal. I wanted to. Jeez, you're insta though. No offense, but you're fat. I'm sorry. I already know. I don't want to sound insensitive. I already know. I'm like a twig. Like I could hang out on a branch and no one would notice me. Hearing someone actually like call me fat, that hurt. Body shaming? Really thin? Oh boy! Body shaming, huh? Yeah. 
I'll bring that up in part two. For now, let's discuss what we know about Finn. Frick mentioned earlier in the journal that Finn has made illusions of starving himself, such as in the extension of this screenshot. Oh, and would you look at that? The screenshot conveniently cut off right before Finn said sorry. Why am I not surprised? I'm trying so hard to be normal. Being thin ain't good either. I starved myself for a week once. Like, I didn't eat. But I drank water. I only eat one thing a day. Because I hate myself. Blah blah blah, and this one. The ending point here is that Finn struggles with feelings of anorexia, according to him. Now, I imagine that doesn't mean anything to Frick, but it does say something about how Finn views and responds to the presence of fat. Not necessarily just on himself, but in general. If this is a little too difficult for you to grasp, Frick, it means he responds negatively to it. Is Minty perfectly within her rights to be offended that he called her fat? Yes, of course, I'm not denying that. What I am saying is that there's a deeper reason as to why Finn might not have immediately registered that what he was saying was wrong, or why he said it without considering Minty's feelings in the first place. You flat out claiming that he also lies about being anorexic for the sake of attention, which you did do! He claims to be starving himself for some bullshit, and I know it's bullshit because he's all drama hand to head one second and perfectly fine the next. Isn't helping and is another instance of you cutting context or inserting a claim based on personal opinions that you can't substantiate in order to make Finn look like the bad guy. He could very well be suffering from anorexia. How do you know he doesn't? Because you have a feeling? Because you don't believe him? No! Provide actual reasoning behind why you don't believe him about his mental health conditions or shut the fuck up. Okay, fine. I guess I really don't. Being busy with school and soccer every single day is called doing nothing. You're right though. I should just try harder. Because I don't try enough. Here we go again. Can you stop throwing shade? It's not any at all helping. Basically, Sunny felt left out of something. She kinda was. And Finn basically told her it's because she doesn't do shit. You know, because she dared to have a personal life. Wow, unfortunately we can't see the context of what Finn actually said to them to elicit this reaction. Maybe he said that, maybe he didn't. He could have said that, or maybe he could have made note that because she doesn't actively participate in things online, of course she's going to be left out of situations, because she's not there to participate in them. If things are happening online and you're offline doing something else, then yes, obviously you're not going to be able to participate in those online activities. What do you want, people to wait around until you're online at your convenience? Nobody's going to hold up and wait on you for every single little thing, especially if it's acknowledged that you're often busy with school and other things. That's unfair to everyone else. God, this is stupid. Lamau, I ain't sending you mine. Also, wanna know something weird? Oh, oh. It's actually weirder than me. Swear you won't judge. I won't, but nothing is weirder than you. You <laughs> will. XD, I'm into diapers and being treated like a toddler. Don't judge. Oh, really? Hey, I ain't judging at all. You do you. You do you. I think it goes without saying that this is way too much information. So I'm going to assume for the sake of not arguing the same thing over and over again that it was Mentoria who directly expressed to Frick that the information provided by Finn here was too much unwanted information. One, probably should have told him that. Two, considering ABDL stuff is generally psychologically recognized as a coping mechanism and Minty was someone that Finn used to date and Theron probably feels very close to, I imagine that he revealed it to her because he trusted her knowing such a personal aspect about him. Or maybe he wanted to see that those he cared about wouldn't think differently about him knowing that fact. So much for that trust, I suppose. Minty, I recognize that it might have been weird in your eyes, probably because you don't understand it fully, but Finn probably told you that because he thought you'd accept him despite it. Considering that trust has been wholly betrayed by you, not only using this as a means of vilifying him with Frick here, but also for people to make fun of him in private Discord chats, yeah, I saw that. I think I can safely say that Finn probably shouldn't put his faith in you as a friend, and after all of this is done, I really hope he doesn't. Like, uh, when I talk sometimes in the server or DMs, do you feel like uncomfortable with what I say sometimes? Um, I'm uncomfortable with the fact that you're into incest. 
not into that anymore. Okay. Sorry, if I sometimes like go off as too strong, like I make you or anyone else uncomfortable. Oh, are we vilifying people for things that they've done in the past and admit to having overcome now? Okay, then explain this to me, Frick. So here's a little journal of Frick's talking about how someone called their girlfriend a pedophile because there was a three, soon to be two year age gap between them. Yeah, apparently Frick's significant other was accused of the very thing that Frick is accusing Finn of, and there's not a hint of self-awareness that misunderstandings are a thing. In the journal was a comment from Frick's girlfriend, Howling Wolf 64. If you go to Howling Wolf's page, you can find a journal from 2017 indicating that their boyfriend is named Wool Ika. When you go to the Wool Ika account, you can see that it was Frick's old account. And if you scroll through Frick's journals on the Wool Ika account, you can find these gems. Well, gee, Frick, I thought you said that constantly posting about your depressive episodes was bad because it was manipulative and your watchers are going to worry about you, which we can see was exactly what happened in the comments. Beyond that, I was going to go into a long Long diatribe about how the things he watched when he was growing up or the culture that Finn grew up in might have spurred that interest. But nah, I'm just gonna post this. Okay, so like, not to that. X -D 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 -D. Seriously, Fiona and Finn are siblings. Why was I not believed? I hate this. Like, WRF. All right then, I won't ship them. Happy now, XD. Finn is my Sona, Fiona is my OC. Me neither anymore, XD. Seriously, incest is freaking I could just no. Ending point, you don't get to vilify someone in the present day for beliefs they have progressed past. Them progressing past it indicates growth as a person. There would be no point to growing as a person if your past mistakes, something you acknowledge as being mistakes, are still held against you as though you still believe them. Actually, sneak peek guys, this isn't the ending point. We'll talk about this again in part two. If your ears are burning because the tentacle of hypocrisy is flicking them relentlessly, good! And by that I'm totally wearing a diaper. Literally nobody asked my guy. Literally we cannot see who Finn is talking to or whether nobody asked. Do you even evidence? I still kind of have a thing for liking diapers. It's really weird and no one really sees me as a normal person after that. I'm sorry if that weirds you out. TBH, everyone has their own thing. And really, as long as it's not smell like piss and hurts everyone knows, you know? <laughs> I hide it pretty well. And uh, I just throw it out quickly. So, yeah, still. I've already made note that this is a psychologically recognized coping mechanism, so I'm just gonna scream into a pillow. I don't have boobs yet, or a pussy. Okay, <laughs> true. <laughs> yet. Yet. <laughs> done be gay for me? I'll try. <laughs> I done want us about to fuck and you go, what the fuck? Where is your pussy? <laughs> in mind, Minty Hummer was 13 at the time of the screenshots. And Finn was 15. Like, are you just forgetting that as the person you're alleging as a victim goes down in age, so too does the person you're vilifying? Additionally, since you and your girlfriend have about a two and a half year age difference and seem to have dated since you were what, 11, 10? We have been dating for three years, 10 months, one week, and five days. It would be stupid hypocritical for you to be saying that a 15 year old talking to a 13 year old like this is bad. How does your girlfriend talk to you? Day one, me, fails, X, OMG. <laughs> also that's incest, whoa. <laughs> X, D, D, D. <laughs> we ain't related, X, D. I feel like we are. <laughs> I mean, He's right. How do you come? Another instance where we can't see who he's talking to, what was said before, and what was said after. Thank you, next. But you're watching a movie. <laughs> but I've already watched it, XD. Then do something else. <laughs> I DK touch myself, XD. Oh, the food is here. I'm a eat dinner now, XD. Jesus fucking Christ, I'm gonna pretend you didn't say that last part. Have fun. <laughs> yeah, I straight up just think that this is a running joke of Finn's, mostly because I found an instance of him doing the very same thing in Frick's server, and because I've seen other people do this before. Considering Frick is no stranger to offensive jokes, I don't really think they're in a position to criticize. By the way, the poor kid in these images that Frick is making fun of, they suffer from progeria, which causes a child's body to age rapidly. Kids who suffer from this don't tend to live past the age of 13. Whoops. 
So this next part is, and this should come as absolutely no surprise to anyone, not explained by Frick within the journal. I had to go ask Finn, but apparently this plush Wendigo person is Finn's ex-boyfriend. That's your context, let's dive in. Finn, multiple times during our relationship, when I was known as Seb, constantly talked about not being ready for a relationship, and, due to this, the relationship was on and off a couple of times. For what reason Finn was like this, we may never know. However, at times, it did make me uncomfortable. Despite showing support and being willing to accept that Finn may not be ready for another relationship, this was something that would happen once or twice before the relationship finally ended sometime last year. Wait, what? The process of him turning you down because he didn't feel like he was ready for a relationship made you uncomfortable? Man, you kids are slighted by some weird things, I tell ya. When I expressed that this is not how I wanted to start this Monday morning during one of his I'm not ready for another relationships, Finn then went on to say that what he did was a dick move and went on to apologize a ton. While I do feel like, to me, it was a genuine apology, to an outsider it may seem like guilt tripping and I don't blame them. Not long after, however, around an hour or so, we were back together anyway. <laughs> Wait, are you, are you actually serious? Frick! You put in a testimony from Finn's ex where they flat out state that they personally think Finn was being genuine to them, but they could understand how an outsider, likely someone without context, could get the wrong impression and assume that it was guilt tripping? Really? Doesn't this completely invalidate your stance on Finn within this journal? Especially because all of your screenshots are only snippets of the progenitor conversations and are being viewed by your audience which consists of a bunch of outsiders to the situation. Finn would occasionally say things like, I'm the worst boyfriend though, ooh, ooh, just casually in a conversation. Out of context, this does appear to be bad. However, when applied to the original supposedly lighthearted context and the whole, ooh, ooh, love you, then it can be taken in an entirely different way. Personally, it's really up to you to decide how you see this. No, no, it's not up to you to decide how to see this, especially because the you in question here is Frick's audience, whom Frick is already swaying with mentions of guilt tripping and calling Finn a manipulator. You're leaving it up to the audience, but Frick is pairing that with out of context screenshots that they are forming an incorrect narrative around. You can't expect people to come to an accurate conclusion when they are being fed misinformation from the get go. There would also be times when Finn would make sexual jokes towards myself and constantly reminding Finn that I am asexual would be very weirded out. An example of this would be that one time where he exclaimed that he was in heat for me during an innocent conversation about hot weather and then proceeded to use the hormones and the my classmates influence me a lot excuse. He then after some more messages from me explaining how sex doesn't interest me said that he needs control and to be honest, I kind of agree. Note, I was and still am a minor between the ages of 13 and 15 during this time, so you can imagine how outsiders might feel looking in and how uncomfortable I might have felt. Between the ages of 13 and 15, so were you 13 when you dated Finn or were you 15? And when did this dating happen? Was it two years ago when Finn was 15? Was it four years ago when he was 13? How old are you now? We can't accurately gauge the situation when you're leaving out so much important information. Additionally, Finn is a non-asexual teenage boy, so yes, of course he's going to be hormonal. If he's telling the truth about the notion that his classmates influence him a lot, then that would be indicative that those he's around during school participate in a lot of sexual talk, which yeah, would influence him and that would be a difficult habit to break if it's something he's exposed to and participates in on a daily basis. Like me and fucking swearing. Or like Frick and participating in shit tier humor at someone else's expense. Also, why are the ages of between 13 and 15 being highlighted? According to Finn, Plush Wendigo and him dated in July of 2018 and this lasted for about a month. Plush Wendigo is 15 and their birthday is October 31st. Sick ass birthday by the way, I am mucho jealous. So Plush would have been 14 and Finn would have just turned 16. Were the conversation supposed to extend from when Plush was 13 into when they were 15? Surprise surprise, no screenshots of that and that's still only a two year difference. An unknown amount of time later and Finn eventually gets onto the topic of having children with a minor. Myself in a separate Discord DM stated that the situation made me feel slightly uncomfortable, but I didn't want to upset him and his kind of really unrealistic expectations for relationships. And asking me multiple times if unless you want to be prego ooh woo, I then later openly expressed my discomfort and told Finn, isn't it a bit early to be thinking about kids? I mean, 
Technically not really. Realistically, it's good to know if your partner is on the same wavelength as you in certain big areas of life. Children, marriage, housing situations, living accommodations, religion, medical knowledge, future career prospects, etc. If Finn was under the impression that he and you would be together for a long period of time, realistically, if he wanted kids, he would have to know that you also wanted kids. Now yes, at your age, and even at Finn's age, neither of you can really be sure that your opinions are gonna stay the same well into adulthood. With me, for example, when I was your age, Finn's age, and all the way up to 19, I didn't want kids. When I turned 21 or 22, however, my stance on that completely changed. So while it's not super early or wrong for Finn to be addressing the notion of him thinking he wants kids in the future with his significant other, it is too early to gauge whether or not that opinion will remain unchanged. Also, if he's a minor and is dating a minor, and he's thinking about future prospects of them having kids, no, that's not a problem. That's not him looking at a minor and saying, well, Wow, I really want to put a baby in that baby. It's him thinking, wow, I want to one day have children with this person I love. Mind you, it would be totally different if you had screenshots of him basically saying that, but guess what I'm not seeing? Yeah, it's a little extreme, but teenagers are dumb and can't regulate their emotions properly. Shock of all shocks. Also, it would be really weird if one of the accusers just so happened to have a pic of a canonically 15-year-old character of theirs on their DeviantArt account who's pregnant with twins, because then trying to vilify Finn for also thinking about the prospects of kids would be really scummy and hypocritical. I can't possibly think of someone involved with this situation who might have that in their gallery, however. Hey, Mentoria! Do you know someone like that? Gee, Frick, why are you including testimony vilifying Finn for thinking about wanting kids when one of the people whom you got screenshots from does the same fucking thing and expresses it through their artwork? Oh yeah, and when was this piece posted? 2017? When Mentoria was 13? Weird! I'm pretty sure there's more and that this is just the tip of the iceberg. However, it is way too late at night and I want to put all of this behind me. Wow, so much effort put into a serious situation where you guys are trying to expose some kid. Finn, if for whatever reason you are reading this, whether it be brought to your attention or you are simply lurking, I am still an acquaintance, a friend, or whatever you might call our relationship at this point, and I want things to stay like that. Finn, advice from me. Don't go back to these people. I'm not taking your side, but I'm not defending it either. I want to help you through dramas, and I want to help you improve, to be a better person. And sometimes that means siding with the people who are against you and hearing what they have to say. Sure, I am still going to be there for you, but please don't expect me to be someone you can constantly fall back on, okay? Sometimes drama has to be dealt with by yourself. And the first step to actually getting rid of the drama is not being uncomfortable towards minors and making a scene. Okay. Thank you, plush Wendigo. And with that garbage out of the way, we come to the last and latest update in the journal, and unfortunately the most serious one. Now, just a note to everyone watching, these screenshots in particular are going to make you uncomfortable. I was uncomfortable reading them. But understanding the full context of the situation is important, so I'm not going to leave anything out. If things get a little too much for you, I encourage you to take a break and go do something else. With that said, let's continue. This is gonna be a long one. Oh, fuck me, please read this. He sends so many explicit fucking messages to an 11 year old child. 11 years old! You're not even ready for this. It made me feel physically sick. So, as a warning, please don't read these if you're sensitive. This is Finn's conversation with an 11 year old. It is general knowledge in the small community that this person is young, very young, and Finn's last comment seems only to be a cover-up, not a genuine question. Well, I'm circumcised, so it's worse. Oh, damn. R.I.P. Like, there's exposed skin, and like, if you touch that, it's sensitive as F, and it twitches, it twitches when you rub it. Fuck, I love that for me. I don't know why, but I love overwhelming amounts of pleasure. All my life. OML. Oh, OML. Oh, That's why coming is such a rush for me. Yes, there was this one time I fapped like eight times in an hour. Ow! Ooh! Ah! Ah, God, I haven't done that since high school and that left burns. Jesus fuck. Ow! Ow, dude. N pace yourself and don't. Pace yourself and don't. Holy shit! And it came so much like... Longest I've gone is like four times. Jesus fucking Christ, my underwear is like XD. Just my dead babies everywhere. 
WTF? What? We have sperm, LMAO. I know. So? But the way that's phrased. The one thing I hate about being a guy, though, is unwanted boners. They fucking suck ass. I'm super sorry if this is too invasive and you do not have to answer it, but mind me asking how big you are? If it's too invasive, just ignore and I'll delete it. Six inches, if I'm really horny. Well, shit, no wonder it's noticeable. Normally it's like five, five. Shut up. I wasn't saying being big is a bad thing. You don't know. Shit it. It's Just great. Now I want a fap XD. Ugh, me too. Excuse me. <laughs> Same. Let me just quickly open up gay porn. I have a question though. Already done, bitch. Okay, same. Fuck, I just came all over myself. Damn, I'm still going surprisingly. Happy coming. XD. XD. I have a question. How do pussies like come? Come comes out? Elaborate. Like, how do you orgasm? Like, do you feel it squeeze on something or? Well, you spasm a bit, but you really don't feel the cum come out. How does the spasm feel? Amazing. I guess how yours feel, minus the cum everywhere. I hear it lasts like longer. Actually, no, it's pretty short. Mine is like two to three seconds, cause like when we finish, it like pulsates. You could physically feel it when you fap, it's weird. Wait, Wolt's brain's no working. It's around the same as yours. Sometimes when I fap, I can feel it coming. Like something is about to explode and then I finish. Just my whole body just explodes. That's similar to the female orgasm. Except ours is messy. I came all over my face. Damn. I gave myself a facial XD. Must be nice. Lick it off. Mm. Mood. It like went on my tongue once. Dicks come faster. XD. I usually take a few minutes, but not this time, I guess. Mine, I was very horny, and it hurt because it was too hard oft. Damn. Ye, XD. Anyways, hmm. Wait, how old are you again? And let me say this for those of y'all who can't hear in the back. Whether the minor in question responded to Finn in the same manner Finn was speaking to them or not means absolutely jack shit. They are a minor. They cannot consent to sexual acts, and they certainly should not be spoken to in this kind of manner by somebody with this big of an age gap with them. If a 20-year-old man was grooming a 14-year-old girl on the internet, would that be okay? Even if she texted back in an equally sexual manner? Absolutely not. Mm. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. Really? <clears throat> if you don't already expect me to have the full conversation for these screenshots, then you don't watch enough Ponder Sprocket videos. Yee. XD. Anyways, mm, how old are you again? Then go to sleep. Shh. You can't even type anymore. I could still type properly, Jay. Shut out. Right. Let me live my kaig. Now sleep, child. I need to know your age. This might be illegal. Sleep. If you're 17, it's of age. Then I'll sleep. I am not under 11. Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure I know my age, Ben. I don't. Well, I'm over 11. I just worried this might be illegal. Just if It isn't, Finn. Illegal. I promise. Okay. Plus, it isn't like we fucked. Not yet. No, JK. Um, please sleep. No, my heart belongs to Kaya. Yeah. And mine to my BF, who shall not be named right now. Nini Ino. Bye. See you tomorrow. I can see Hryjing. Weird how things can change when you provide a little additional context. So let's go over this, shall we? Frick claims that Finn asking Cole's age is effectively just him trying to save face. Save face from whom? Finn and Cole are in private DMs. Unless screenshotted, nobody else would be seeing this conversation. Additionally, Finn not only continues to ask Cole their age, he also flat out makes note that he does not know what it is. Even the notion of him trying to save face doesn't make sense because that's already under the assumption that someone else is likely going to see the conversation and they're the one Finn is trying to save face from. But as we've already seen, elements of the conversation can very easily be cropped out. And in fact, Finn asking Cole's age in the first place could have been cropped out. So there would have been no point to saving face 
if Finn was already under the impression that someone else might see the conversation. Beyond that, you have Cole refusing to outright state what their age is, and in at least one case that we can see here, flat out lying about it. Let me explain. Cole, also known as Ceramic Coyote's birthday, is January 30th. The conversation Finn had with Cole where Cole says that they are over 11 years old happened on January 11th. 2019. So not only did they beat around the bush with regards to telling Finn their actual age, they even told him that they were over the age of 11, which is the age you, frick, allege that everyone knows them as, except for Finn apparently. Additionally, Cole states, if you're 17, it's of age. Not only was Finn not 17 at the time of this screenshot, because his birthday is June 9th and he turned 17 this June, it's weird for Cole to specifically cite that stipulation. It's almost like Cole is aware of the legal young youngest classification for a pedophile that states that the youngest a diagnosed pedophile can be is 16, and they have to be physically attracted to someone who is at least five years their junior. Or at the very least, they're aware that the age of consent in the Philippines, where Finn lives, is 12. Well, that would be weird. I wonder where they could have possibly heard about- Oh, look at that, Cole follows Junkie on Twitter. I mean, that doesn't really mean much. It's not like they might have heard about it from- Oh, look, Cole follows Spockter on Twitter. Well, now that we're on Cole's Twitter, why don't we have a look around and see what pops up? It's so fucking important that this journal is shared. Definity Finn Finn is a manipulative pedophile and bully. The age of consent in the Philippines is 12 years old. He had extremely gross conversations with a child of the age of 11. He's done way more than that. Well, I'm over 11. He had extremely gross conversations with a child of the age of 11. Uh-huh. So we already have an instance of Cole flat out refusing to answer the question as to how old they are when directly asked for the sake of someone determining whether interacting with them is okay, which kind of important thing there, Cole. You not telling someone how old you are and then engaging in sexual conversations with them when they don't know your age is going to get them in trouble. You face no consequences for it, so you're kind of being a prick by deliberately lying about your age to someone who, as I stated, can get in trouble because of that lie. As evidenced here, where the lie means that you guys can crop the rest of the conversation and make the guy out to be a pedophile. Dick move. I wonder if there are any other aspects of Cole online that might confuse someone into thinking that they're potentially older than Frick is claiming they are. Meet the artist remake. Decided to remake it because my old one was very old and extremely outdated. Also, yes, I put two of my kinks on here. Get over it! Some people are into weird shit, okay? 5 foot 4 inches, 163 centimeters, 210 pounds, 95 kilograms, Cole. He, him, American, dislikes, hate speech, mental disorders, abuse of any kind, black coffee, being trans, children, likes, his boyfriend, horror, complimenting his boyfriend, Artemis, his bird, BDSM slash bondage, coffee, black, music, sleep. Five foot four inches, huh? You're kind of tall for an 11 year old, considering the average height for an 11 year old girl. Yes, I know that you're trans, but you acknowledge that you're not on hormones, so physically you're developing as a teenage female is 144 centimeters. Now, maybe you're just a tall 11 year old. That's fine, nothing wrong with that. B is probably kind of jealous of you. Shut up. And hell, 210 pounds? B is 27 and they're only 120. Shut up. Actually, you lost some weight recently. What are you, 117? <laughs> Hell, but I ain't knocking you for being a big guy. I'm certainly not one to talk, but you have to realize that you're kind of bigger than someone expects an 11 year old to be. Not to mention you tweet things like this. Why do 16 year olds think they're old? I'm 19 and I'm a baby. Stop it. My best friend turned 16 today. For them, two more hours. And they're complaining about how old they were. Like, synodally, no, you're nowhere near old. You're basically a fetus. Hey, trans folk. How old were you when you were just like, maybe assigned gender isn't my gender? I figured something was up around the age of 9 or 10 and finally realized at age 11 about 4 months later, I came out to pretty much everyone. I only recently got my first binder and my teachers are calling me Cole. My boyfriend has been here all the way and I couldn't be here without him. Color absolutely nobody shocked when you refer to someone who is five years older than you as a fetus and you talk about the realization about you being trans at 11 as though it's a past experience when you haven't even turned 12 yet kind of leaves room for people to not realize that you're an 11 year old. Also this, 
kudos to you for your development, but I would not look at you and immediately know that you were supposed to be 11. 12 now. Based on the extended conversation, we know that Finn didn't actually know how old Cole was as Frick is claiming he did. Cole has also made note that only their close friends are allowed to know their age. If Finn is not one of Cole's close friends and wasn't one at the beginning of the year, then by Cole's own stipulation, he wouldn't know how old they were. The biggest problem with this accusation, and stop me guys if you've heard this one before, is how can Finn be guilty of what Frick is claiming he is if he not only was unaware of the age of the person he was talking to, but very likely might not have ever even seen a picture of them by this point in their friendship. The paraphilia known as pedophilia is characterized by an adult attraction to prepubescence, typically under the age of 13, though a 16-year-old can be classified as such if they're attracted to those five years younger than them. We can already see further into the conversation that at the point in time where Finn and Cole just started talking, Finn wasn't entirely sure how old they were. Now, could something have happened where Cole revealed their age or face to Finn and the behavior changed? Yes, that's actually exactly what happened, except it's the complete opposite of what you would expect based on Frick's recounting of the situation. I asked Finn, who still had Cole added on Discord, to go through and record the entire conversation for me, start to finish. Here's what I found. The inappropriate conversation between Cole and Finn happened at the beginning of their direct messages to one another, at which point we've already seen that Finn was unsure of Cole's age. Later on in that chat, Cole directly confirms their age to Finn, but this was long after the inappropriate exchange. And even later than that, Cole sent Finn an image of themselves, which therein gave Finn an idea of what they looked like. In Frick's journal, they state, If a 20-year-old man was dreaming a 14-year-old girl on the internet, would that be okay? Even if she texted back in an equally sexual manner? Absolutely not. Except what happened in the chat between Finn and Cole is actually the exact opposite of grooming. The chat started out talking in depth about sexual things and then tapered off almost to the point of non-existence. Grooming works in the reverse. The chats start out innocuous and it's usually through a system of questions and rewarding behavior that the groomer slowly gets their victim to open up to them sexually. They might ask questions about the victim's body or very commonly encourage them to touch their own body, usually followed up with excessive praise or declarations of I love you. Sometimes when the victim refuses or expresses discomfort, the groomer will even become cold or or distant, even emotionally abusive, forcing the victim to accommodate them in order to get back the happy demeanor from the groomer that the victim has become dependent on. This spurs the victim into wanting more of that positive attention, so they acclimate themselves to the sexual behavior being imposed on them. But Finn didn't do this. This chat indicates that after Finn learned how young Cole was, the sexual talk stopped. There were a few jokes thrown in towards the beginning, but that was, again, before Cole confirmed his age to Finn. With Finn's permission, I'm actually going to upload an unlisted version of this chat so that you can see exactly what I mean. The entire recording is about 44 minutes, so it would be too long for this video. However, there's one part of that chat that I'm going to omit for Cole's sake. It's admittedly a very personal thing, and I think that Finn talked them through it very well, good on you kid, but simply because of the nature of what's being discussed, even with Finn's permission, I legitimately feel that it would be unfair to Cole to showcase that particular part of the chat, so that's being cut out, everything else is intact. You can find the link to it in the description. To end off this point, I would like to bring up a comment that was actually left on Frick's accusation journal by a user named Deertails. For those who want context, my little brother is 11. He literally still plays with toys. I asked him what he thought sex was, and he knew briefly. I asked him if he would have it. He said not until he's ready. He understood that he was too young, but it isn't the case for everyone. Some kids don't know, some want attention, and some want to look cool and grown up. Not all kids think like he does. 11 year olds aren't even preteens yet. They're gonna want to try and be grown up and look cool. Of course they're gonna go along. They are easy to manipulate. They are young and still growing. Their minds are developing and easy to tinker with. Please, if you are young and feel uncomfortable, tell an adult if this is happening to you. And for those saying a fucking 11 year old <clears throat> led someone on, the kid hasn't even started their fucking period yet. Doubt they truly meant what they said. For fuck's sakes, you're sick.
Frick even responded to this comment saying thank you, except this comment completely flies in the face of Frick's accusations. According to this very comment, 11 year olds do not act like the way Cole acted in these screenshots. While they might have some knowledge of what sex is, one would not expect someone that young to have such an intimate understanding of masturbation, which Cole has demonstrated. If Finn was not aware of Cole's age, there is no way he would have been able to determine that they were as young as they were based on how advanced their sexual knowledge is or how intimately they understand what an orgasm feels like. It's just not realistic for them to expect Finn to know this when Frick is flat out acknowledging in their response to this comment that 11 year olds shouldn't act like this. One thing I need to make very very clear is that Cole, currently being 12 years old, is not at fault for how this situation played out. I need to make that very clear. Much in the same vein as one would not expect an 11 year old to be super versed in sex topics, I wouldn't expect an 11 year old to be versed enough to recognize actual grooming tactics or to be able to differentiate between that and what was happening here. I also can't be sure of who took the screenshots out of context. Was it Cole who was simply naive about the situation and didn't realize that him refusing to tell Finn his age after this exchange was a problem? If so, they likely cut off the screenshots where they did because they weren't aware that the context of the entire conversation was important. Or was it Frick, given the full screenshots by Cole and then edited out the part that didn't play to the narrative? Could it also have been out of naivety? Could Frick have been given these screenshots as they were and simply not known to ask further? Honestly, based on what I've seen, that one seems pretty likely. However, that doesn't change the fact that even with that naivety, Frick went ahead and made this journal, spreading incredibly serious allegations about someone that they could not have been entirely sure on. There are even things that we'll be discussing in part two that Frick could have very easily either asked someone knowledgeable about or done research on, but they didn't, and I can tell that they didn't because they are spreading around various assumptions that they are completely wrong about. And we don't even get to stop here because while I was editing this commentary, Frick updated the journal Again, a hidden user said the following. Okay, this is about the situation with Finn, which frankly I just heard of, but I mean, he did the same thing to me that he did with that 11 year old. I don't actually know how old he was at the time or even how old he is now, but I'm still a minor. He also forced me into doing a sexual role play with him. And then a couple of days later, he told me he liked me and I told him like, IDK man, I'll think on it, but I appreciate it. Then a few days later, he got with someone. I think it might've been with someone named Mel. I think I remember that being in their username. And I was super hurt and upset about it. But while being with that person, he guilt tripped me, saying he still liked me and he cared about me even though he was already with someone. Again, I don't know how important this is, but I thought I'd share my experience on it. I don't have any screenshots because I blocked him on Discord after that. Do what you want with this info, but I'd rather my name not be mentioned if you choose to use it, lol. Okay, firstly, since this is the most obvious issue, literally no screenshots are provided of this. Any of this. We are purely going on testimony at this point, which is, and this should come as no shock to anyone, something that can be skewed based on personal interpretation or, you know, lied about. Kids, if you provide a claim with no evidence, then someone can say that the claim is false with no evidence. That's how this works. If you want someone to believe what you're saying, you need to prove it, not just say that it happened. If you don't provide evidence, well, you risk being put in a Ponder Sprocket video, apparently. To delve into the claims as a whole, this user claims that they don't know how old Finn was, nor how old he is now, and goes on to claim that they are a minor. Okay, so is Finn. Technically speaking, Finn is still a minor. In this one line alone, they're betraying how little they know about the situation or how to approach it. We aren't told how old this user is either, so for those who do know Finn's age, we have absolutely no point of comparison. This is the problem with hiding the people making claims. You can't actually do that when their identity and, in this case, their age is so important to the case that you're making. Secondly, they make the claim that Finn confessed feelings to them, they partially rejected him, and and then he ended up dating someone else and that hurt. Yeah, that's the reality of rejecting someone, especially if you're not giving them a definitive time frame as to when you might be able to date them or when you might be ready to. They're not always going to wait around for you and it's completely unfair for you to expect them to, especially if you haven't asked that of them, which this user didn't say they did. You were unsure about dating him and then Finn found someone else who said that they did want to date him and he pursued them instead. That doesn't make him the bad guy. It does kind of make you an asshole for leaving 
leaving him dangling and unsure about whether you felt the same way, and then getting mad when someone else scoops him up. Like, watch a Gretzico season 2. Just because you're not ready for a relationship doesn't mean that the person you reject is obligated to wait around until you are ready, especially if they have no time frame for how long that might be. Grow up. Uh, side note for me, before I started dating my current partner, I had just broken up with someone else. He approached me after the breakup and expressed his feelings, and I told him that I was in too vulnerable a state to think about it just then, and I needed a few months alone to collect myself. Two months later, I asked him to a movie. At the time, I wasn't sure about a new relationship, I gave him a time frame, and then when that time frame was over, I moved forward with the new relationship with him. You can't just be vague about stuff like that and expect people to be okay with being strung along for an indeterminate amount of time. Now, Yes, Finn should have asked first before getting too sexual with someone whose age he didn't know. I won't deny that. Note to Finn, learn from experience. But Finn was also a 16-year-old kid at the time, and I don't expect 16-year-olds to always have the best levels of judgment or to know to preemptively ask things before getting too involved. And funny thing, I happen to have screenshots of someone connected to one of the accusers doing that. And we'll talk about that in the next video. Yeah, unfortunately, there are a lot of screenshots to go over and I'm just not gonna be able to do it in one video. Getting the bulk of the serious accusations dealt with first is my main priority, so I hope that I have managed to do that here. Look, I get that the people making these accusations are young, but I don't really think that's an excuse to let them just throw stuff like this out there and not have it be contested. Yes, it might be an excuse for why they were in the mindset that this was a good idea, but unfortunately, let's just say that when I get to the next video, we'll find that that is not entirely just from their age. Accusations of this nature are serious and people need to learn that they can't just throw them out into the ether like this. The fact that the screenshots are so lacking in context that should you find even just a few additional messages after the screenshots cut off from the same conversation, it completely changes the context of the situation is a huge problem here. The claim that Finn was guilt tripping Mentoria into dating him, when you read the whole conversation and see Mentoria's vents, it could be argued that she was the one manipulating him. The body shaming? stems from a mental health condition that Finn has stated in the past that he has. Mentoria is still allowed to be upset over this, mind you, but it's irresponsible and dickish to ignore that his opinion and outlook on it might stem from his alleged eating disorder. Most of the people that Finn interacts with sexually are only two years younger than him, which isn't a drastic age difference. When you consider that these are high school kids and that the person writing the journal, Frick, is dating someone who's two years older than them and has been doing so for three years. Even the most serious allegation takes on a completely different context when you realize that the younger party actively hides their age and later on in the conversation that Frick displayed directly lied that they were older than they were. They also completely ignore that this was the beginning of their interactions with one another when Finn would have known the least about Cole and as he came to know more about them and how old they were the sexual conversations all have completely stopped. I understand that people view the topic of children being groomed online as a serious issue. It completely is but but what's an equally serious issue that people apparently refuse to acknowledge is how serious allegations like this can ruin a person if they're false. Everyone is so quick to want to expose the next YouTube or DeviantArt predator that they don't take into account the people they hurt by making these claims. They basically steamroll over these people and leave them in the dust for things that have perfectly reasonable explanations. The accusers simply failed to consider this because they were too hyper-focused on their own goals, and those goals, whilst made out to seem noble, are often self-serving and spiteful. You can't make a claim like this without considering the very real possibility that you're wrong. Because if you are, then you have effectively just ruined the name or life of someone who was innocent. Allegations like this are hard to escape and made harder when the accusers are skulking around behind the scenes, further exaggerating the claims beyond the scope of what was discussed on this journal. When we come back to this in the next video, I'll be going over what the accusers in this situation have been saying behind closed doors, things that they have sent directly to Finn's girlfriend after all of this, some blatant misunderstandings of the law that they're spreading around as though they're fact, some of them are really funny by the way, as well as what I managed to find in Frick and Mintoria's Discord servers. Until then, my cuties, Octomama out. Okay, well, not actually Octomama out, because I totally have some fan art to show you guys, because it's all awesome, and the artists who did it deserve some love. First up, we have Cup Size, the original and the new version by the Hot to Like a Harpy Harpist Dragon. I like to imagine Ponder Sprocket and everyone are checking out a water park, which kind of makes me jealous, because summer has been melting me. Next up, we have Gajabugaba by the soaring urbanite Seagull City. Seeing Ponder Sprocket in such an adorable cartoony style is so interesting. I really actually 
actually do love seeing so many different interpretations with her and especially with the characters of other artists. It's babysitting time apparently as we've got Mama Ponder and the Ghost Babies by the G. You're pretty cute. GG draws stuff. I just imagine this is Ponder Sprocket dealing with any sort of instance of weebians. They are tiny babies. Here comes Ponder with the Bug Boys by the ruler of your heart, King Artemis. Fiend and Stem look absolutely perfectly contented with themselves here and I am all for it. Let the babies enjoy life. Next up we have Mama Ponder and her little Babu by the classy and couture Madame CJ Artiste. Absolutely adoring how soft and fluffy Ponder Sprocket's hair looks in this. It basically matches stem in levels of floof. We have a lovely collection with Ponder's avatars and co by the mysteriously enchanting Misty Magic 15. Putting together all of my main avatars from over the years, Dr. Dinosaur, Mysterio, Ponder Sprocket, as well as some of my characters, Lexi Junker, Carlisle and Herbert, Mech and Stem, myself, and Doodle Tones, because why not? Here's When Your Babies Get Along by the pretty and poppin' purple penumbra. Yes, fiend, make friends with other eight-legged creatures. You are a good boy and you deserve all of the friends I wholeheartedly support. Ready to star as the next Disney princess, we have Ponder Sprocket by the real-life princess, Heath Hen. It actually kind of looks like she just came bursting out of the window, scaring the living daylights out of stem and erupting into song. And out there amongst the weebians, give me all that evidence, all I ask is one. Actually, a lot is better. <laughs> With a cutie pie hiding in the background, we have Ponder Sprocket fan art by the bounding into frame Spring Bonnie. I can't get over how cute Stem looks with that expression. It is so fitting, you don't even know. Also, I see that Todoroki Deku shirt you rock in there. Nice. To further exemplify that Fiend deserves friends, here's Don B X Fiend, cause why not, by the perfect sunrise aid memoir, Don B. Enjoy the hugs, you precious beans. Fiend's often the one doing the hugging, so he's probably a little taken aback here. Cute. Swooping in to strike your heart is Ponder Sprocket, the best Octomama fan art by the delicious Your Only Dr. Pepper. Yet another adorable depiction of Stem being her adorable self. Love. Honestly, this style looks really cool. Another neat interpretation I wouldn't have expected. And finally, we have Pondering by a secret rose by any other name, Thorn Illustrations. Thorn is actually the person the piece I've been drawing in this video is for. We did an art trade where they drew Mech and Stem with their characters John and Alex, and I've been drawing Ponder Sprocket with them as a return piece. Side note, the sheer size difference between Ponder Sprocket and John gives me life, okay? Don't even test me. Absolutely gorgeous. Check out the links in the description to give all of these artists some much deserved love. I've also included a secondary link down there for anyone who has friends who might be considering suicide so you have an idea of what to look for and how to best help those friends. You can also find my links down there including my link to my DeviantArt and to Pass where you can read the comic that Mech and Stem are from and I promise I will be getting back to that soon. See you guys in part two.